Like, how do you manage your time when it feels like you're doing everything in the world? Right. I actually don't know how you have the time to sleep and eat <laughs> and take care of yourself. She's a superwoman over here. <laughs> Hi Scribble Stars, welcome to the Scribble Talks podcast. I'm your host, Clary Chismar. Today we'll be talking about all things creativity, productivity, self-growth, and self-improvement. And big thanks to Notability, our show host. All right, let's get into it. Hi Mia, welcome Hello. to the podcast. Thank you so much. If you don't mind giving our audience a quick little intro on who you are and what you're up to these days. Yes, absolutely. So hi, my name is Mia and I'm a first year college student at Stanford. I'm prospectively double majoring in math and CS and that's been super exciting. Um, of course, on the side, I love creating content. That takes up a ton of my time, but it's super rewarding. And yeah, I'm super excited to be here. We're excited to have you and we're excited to have our listeners get an inside peek into how you handle all the things that you do, student life, content, CS, math, like it's, I feel like your take on notability is very unique. I'm mm -hmm. sure you're already <laughs> relying on it for upcoming exam season. So why don't we start with maybe, can you give us a little bit of background on your top study methods and how you have been using notability to get through classwork? Yes, absolutely. So I would say notability is definitely a big staple in my everyday routine um, on my iPad and I bring it to all of my classes, particularly like CS and math. Um, at my school, math classes aren't recorded, so you, you know, you should really be showing up. And so I make sure to take notes um, on the app so that I can refer to them later on. Mm -hmm. um, I also take notes, we have like lecture guides, so I kind of annotate those as well as the teacher is presenting. And so mm -hmm. that's been super helpful. Um, in terms of my biggest study tips, I would say is I'm definitely a big proponent of active recall. So things like flashcards, like testing myself, doing practice quizzes has been super helpful in terms of kind of getting the content to the forefront of my brain. Right. Oh my gosh, have you tried the new Learn AI feature in Notability? Not yet, actually. I've heard many good things about it. Yeah. You're going to love it because if you like flashcards and active recall, basically Learn just uses AI to take your note and summarize it for you and give oh. you a flashcards pre-made and a quiz to study. So if you're like in a cram, you know, want to do last minute exam review, you can just test yourself and it's a lifesaver. That's so cool. So, I will be sure to try that yeah, out. Yeah, you have to try that out. Let us know. All right, let's rewind a little bit and yeah. talk about your background. So tell us, so you're in, you're currently at Stanford. Mm -hmm. Where, where did you grow up? How did you end up um, on the West Coast? Yes, so I was born and raised in the UK, actually. Wow. Hence the kind of ambiguous accent that I've developed. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you. Um, and then I moved to the US, um, I want to say around seventh grade, so just before high school. And then I went to high school in Southern California and now I'm in NorCal for college. Cool, do you wanna to talk to us a little bit more about your studies at Stanford mm -hmm. and what's exciting you these days and what are you kind of thinking maybe you might want to continue doing post-grad or... Yeah, for sure. So yeah, anytime anyone ever asks me kind of what I'm studying and I say like math and CS, like I want to go down this double track, it's always kind of like, wow, and even I'm like, you know, that's quite a lot. Um, yeah. Pretty heavy STEM subjects, and mm -hmm. we also have rules against double counting units, so mm -hmm. you you really are kind of doing double the work. Um, but I think that's something like tantalizing. And she's doing content creation. Oh, yes. <laughs> basically not sleeping. <laughs> basically, basically, yeah. But I mean, and that's something I, I talk about in my content as well. Like, how do you manage your time when it feels like you're doing everything in the world? Right. Um, 
but I think there's something like about that challenge that really draws me to it. Like, you know, can I do this? And the big thing for me is I really enjoy all these different parts of my life, like right. content creation and challenging myself to do these heavy subjects because I genuinely get joy out of it. Amazing. And so it doesn't really feel like a chore or work, okay. although, I mean, definitely you feel tired, but <laughs> it's kind of rewarding. Right. Um, so I definitely feel very content with these things I'm doing. They feel fulfilling to me. Okay. Um, but in the long run, like you mentioned, um, it's also important to kind of evaluate how I'm going to balance these priorities moving forward. Yeah. In terms of post-grad, I'm honestly open to a variety of options right now. Um, at Stanford, there's something called like a co-term, which is basically master's studies, um, but kind of for Stanford students. So you apply internally, it's like a different process, and you can start earning credits towards that degree as early as sophomore year, I think. Mm -hmm. So that's maybe something I'm considering. Okay. Um, because you just stay in school for an extra year and get yeah. your master's. You can't get enough, she's a lifelong learner over here. <laughs> you can't get enough of it. <laughs> yeah. Such an intellectual. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I mean, I think there's definitely joy in learning, yeah. um, and I'm very grateful for to like be at such a really great institution. So um, I'm definitely down to kind of stick it out a bit longer. Um, but I think in terms of content creation is definitely something I see myself doing for the rest of my life, hopefully. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, and I think my life really kind of informs it as well. So there's that. And then there's actually like a bunch of other stuff like I do outside. Um, I actually lead like a global nonprofit too. Whoa! Um, What's yeah. What's the name of the nonprofit? It's called Lingo X, and basically um, we have students in 136 countries right wow. now, which is super exciting. Um, basically, we provide free language education resources to underserved communities. Wow. Um, it was kind of a high school passion project. I'm continuing with it now, and that's also something I like to kind of dedicate the rest of my life to. Wow. Oh my God. Incredible. I actually don't know how you have the time to sleep and eat <laughs> and take care of yourself. She's a superwoman over here. <laughs> Do you have any tips for people who are looking to kind of better time manage their life and mm -hmm. <laughs> juggle as many things as you, yes. but also stay sane? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'd say a couple things that come to mind is first of all, kind of going back to what I was talking about, making sure you genuinely enjoy the work. Um, like for me, I mean, yes, it takes physical time and labor, but it's not kind of like a labor of, you know, exhaustion or kind of like soul. It's not that taxing in that sense. And so when you enjoy it, I feel like it kind of makes things fly by a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say also a tip I have would be kind of, um, I like to think of it as like immersion. Um, it's really hard to kind of focus when you're thinking of like 10,000 things at once or like what am I going to do after this and so kind of a rule that I've set for myself and that I've actually found has been super helpful is say I'm in a lecture it might be tempting to be like let me actually take this time to respond to emails and stuff like that right. but I'm like actually let me fully listen and right. fully be engaged and then I find that I actually end up needing to do less studying because yes. I recall the information better yes Yes, yeah. I that actually was my number one philosophy going throughout college. Yeah, I didn't study that much during finals week. Actually, during dead week, I usually planned a vacation. I love um, that. And because at Berkeley, you have a week off where you have no classes. Oh, I didn't you, know you went to Berkeley. Yeah, well, we're rivals. Oh, technically, oh, but <laughs> no. But so you have a dead week where you're supposed to be studying. But my philosophy was exactly that, where I never missed a class. Yeah. And I always actively listened and I didn't feel like I needed to study Yeah. because, you know, there's no point in cramming the material yes. at the end. If you're actually absorbing it and doing the homework, it's like you should, the concept of studying shouldn't really exist. It should be light review, which is why now that we have the learn AI function and notability, like I wish I had that as a student because that would have been the perfect way to study. It's like, yeah. if you actually show up in class, you listen every day, you know the material, and then you have flashcards you just review and you're like, okay, maybe there's a couple of things I don't remember as well. You review those chapters, bada bing, bada boo, you're done. But there's, it takes away so much of the stress. Yes, for sure. And 
I think like definitely this idea of working smarter not harder is a big thing yes um, it's something I struggle a lot with too I, like, sometimes I'm like you know I have to feel like I really gave it my all in order right. to be like I did my best right but that's not necessarily always the case sometimes yeah. you can feel better um, maybe spend less time on something but if you use the right techniques or kind of mentality going in um, you might end up having a better performance right right so tell us a little bit more about your math and CS experience because mm -hmm. that's very unique and we mm -hmm. actually have a lot of listeners who are interested in STEM subjects and so I'm very inspired by you pursuing these really really hard subjects are there any anything that you've learned from from those that you want to share first of all I think again it's I it's kind of opened my world because I personally went to a more humanities oriented high school um, and so I didn't have as much exposure to kind of these stem subjects as some of my peers kind of early on um, but now coming to a pretty stem heavy school it's kind of opened my eyes to this like huge vast field of opportunities there are um, and I think especially for women um, historically underrepresented in these kinds of fields, um, it's really cool to see, yeah. you know, the number of like females and like girls and women kind of participating increase. And so that's been super cool. Um, in terms of my biggest takeaways, um, it's I've really enjoyed, especially in our classes, we, every time we introduce a new kind of concept, we talk about the kind of real life applications of it. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, right now, I'm taking a class on probability and it's actually for my CS major, um, but it's a bit more kind of math adjacent. Um, and we're talking about, you know, how do you sort this number of things into this number of buckets mm -hmm. and like the real world application is like when we're on our computers and we need to like you know use servers we're also being kind of sorted into these servers right. and I mean that's just kind of like a minuscule yeah. um example right. um but it's also really cool like at school we have a ton of super awesome guest speakers coming mm -hmm. in all the time wait are you learning anything about like ai in these classes yes. i'd be curious to hear i'm sure everyone would be curious to yes. hear your thoughts on ai since that's changing so rapidly right yes. now yes for sure and it's honestly so interesting because we we are pretty candid about these things with our teachers. We're like, you know, if AI is the future and if everyone is able to use AI in their jobs, why do we have such stringent AI policies in our classes? And why is it kind of so taboo? Um, and I think even for them sometimes it's hard to give an answer because yeah. um, it's not like AI bad or anything like that, mm -hmm. but I think for a lot of them it's really kind of pushing the importance of like you know putting the work in and kind of mm -hmm. learning and letting you appreciate that process mm -hmm. um, without you know always kind of relying on those kinds of things but it, it kind of varies like a lot of the time in kind of some context teachers will be like you know you can use these tools because right. that's real life in real right. life you can um, but I mean for certain like sometimes assignments you can't use AI but mm -hmm. like you were talking about with that new feature like yeah. when we're studying I mean it it's definitely like whatever works for you works for you. Yeah, yeah. But I think AI is an amazing tool to be able to help amplify your potential. Yeah. And there's obviously things we need to be careful of. Mm -hmm. There's very interesting conversations in the artistic community right now with AI and a lot of the new image oh, generation. Yes, yes. Um, and that's brought up a lot of discourse around, you know, what is art and what is, you know, human experience and is this, is this okay? But I, it, you know, everyone has a different thought on it, but I think as long as, you know, we are using AI to amplify our potential and not replace, because it's never, you know, the human experience, it can't, it can't replace the human yeah, experience. Sure. It just unlocks new gates for us to yeah. explore new frontiers but but it is a very scary dynamic field so it's you know I wanted to get your thoughts on what those conversations look like at Stanford and just you know in in the worlds you're in since you're 
so heavily you know focused on CS and math yeah. and all these things. Sometimes it can feel a little dystopian. People are kind of asking these questions like what's going to happen in the future? But something I find quite inspiring is that a lot of the conversations we have in school and between myself and my peers is how can we harness AI for things like social good? Right. Because I think any tool has the power to kind of change lives for the better as well. And if we can do that, I think that would be amazing. So it's that's definitely something that we're talking about. And I think that provides a lot of hope for humanity as well. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Oh my gosh. Well, you are such an inspiration. You are a role model, especially to, you know, any women listening who are interested in pursuing these really intense STEM fields. Like you are such a role model and inspiration. And thank you so much for being on the podcast. We're so lucky to have you. Thank you for having me. We're so excited to have, uh, you know, you'll have to share your social handles so that our audience can follow along for more tips and interesting conversations that you have regarding AI, CS, study, student life, and how you use notability. So yeah, insert social course. handles. Yes. Um, shameless plug. Um, so on Instagram, it's at Mia underscore Elin, Y-I-L-I-N underscore. And then on TikTok, it's the same thing, but without the second underscore, just Mia underscore Elin. We're so excited to bring more inspiring creators like Mia. So stay tuned for more episodes. We'll be live on all major podcasting platforms. Thank you so much. Thank you.